This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, in the um, last lecture, we were looking at measures of averages. Um, with uh, the example, we, we had discrete variables. Well, we're going to look at the same measures of average, arithmetic mean, median, and mode. But this time, to example three, where we've got continuous variables. And so let me write up the table. Uh, it's the total amount paid to employees each week over the last year. So the amount paid of the observation X, uh, 0 to 500, 500 to 1,000, 1,000 to 1,500, 1,500 to 2,000, 2,000 to 2,500. And finally, two and a half thousand to three thousand. Uh, and the frequency, uh, the number of weeks um, the bill was in each of those ranges one, four, eight, nineteen, fourteen, six, a total of fifty two weeks. Uh, now we're going to do exactly the same approach as before. Uh, for each of the three. Uh, but the only thing is, of course, all right, there are four people. Be uh, sorry, four weeks, it was 500 to 1,000. Well, we don't know what it, you know, whether all four of them were 600 or was one 500 or one 800 and so on. And so when it's continuous, we use the midpoint of the range to represent it. So what I mean is, not to 500, we just take the midpoint and treat it as though it was 250. 500 to 1,000, the midpoint, 500 plus 1,000 divided by 2. We treat it as though all four were 750. Similarly, 1,000 to 1,500, the midpoint is 1,250. 1750, uh, 2250, uh, 2750. And so we replace the range by the midpoint. And for the arithmetic mean, we do exactly the same as before. Uh, we need the total of all these observations, so we take f times x, 1 times 250 is 250. 4 times 750 is 3,000. 8 times 1250, uh, 10,000. 19 times, oh, I need my calculator for this, 19 times 750, uh, sorry, 19 times 1750 uh, is 33,250. 14 times 2,250 is 31,500. And finally, 6 times 2,750, uh, 16,500. So we're now treating it effectively as though they are discrete using the midpoints. And the total of the f uh, times x's, or sigma fx, is 250, 3,000, 10,000. 33,250, 31,500, 16,500, uh, 94,500,000. Uh, sigma f, the total number of observations is 52. And so the arithmetic mean or x bar uh, sigma fx over sigma f, 94,500 divided by 52 gives me 1817. Uh, one, These are all dollars, by the way. 1817. So that's the arithmetic mean. And again, don't, I should have said this earlier, but don't leave silly answers. Uh, we can all make silly arithmetic mistakes, but obviously the average must be somewhere between 0 and 3,000. 
If you got 18,170, it should be perfectly obvious you've gone wrong. Anyway, apart from it being bigger numbers, um, it's no different really from before. Uh, just remember, we use the midpoint to represent the range. Uh, the next one, the median. And now then, a little bit different here. Uh, we've already discussed what the median is. It's the middle or the central observation if they were all arranged in order of magnitude. Well, there are 52, so it's the value, if you remember, of, well, n plus 1 over 2, so 52 plus 1 over 2 is the 26.5th observation. Now, that's not the median. We're saying if we did arrange them all in order, how many dollars would the 26 and a half observation be? Well, let's look back at the table in the same sort of way as we did before. I don't need this information anymore. How many people took us up to 500? A total of one. Or how many weeks, I'm sorry. Uh, what about the next four observations? So the second, third, fourth, fifth. That takes us up to five. The cumulative, the total. So one observation took us up to 500. Five observations took us up to 1,000. Another eight took us up to 1,500, so that's a total of 13. So the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th were between 1,000 and 1,500. Uh, the next 19 took us from 1,500 to 2,000. Uh, the total so far, 13 plus 19, 32. So the first observation was up to 500, the second, third, fourth, fifth with 500 to 1,000, the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 1,000 to 1,500, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, up to 32, were there. Well, I want, what was the 26 and a half? Well, the 26 and a half, we know the 13th was 1,500. We know the next 19 up to the 32nd were 1,500 to 2,000. So surely the 26th and a half must be between 1,500 and 2,000. And so, if all that's required is the median class, class group range, we know that the 26th and a half is somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000. And that may be all that's required. We can, however, we did a cheat here, but we can put a value on it. Because think about this, now we draw a little picture. We do know that the 26 and a half observation is somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000. If you look back at the table, we know that the 13th observation took us up to 1,500. And again, looking back at the table, we know that the 32nd observation took us up to 2,000. And we assume, and it's a big assumption, 
that these 19 observations are spread evenly throughout the range. So the bottom, we were at the year 13th. At the top of the range, we were in the 32nd. There were 19 observations. And we assume this spread evenly between 1500 and 2000. And which do we want? We want the 26th and a half. And so we apportion. We say, OK, there are 19 observations take us between 1500 to 2000. And they're all evenly spread. Uh, we only want the one that's how far along? Well, from 13 to 26 and a half is 13 and a half of them. And so if we assume that those 19 are all spread evenly, we can put a value on the 26 and a half. We know it's more than 1,500. But we say, well, we want to know it's 13 and a half along. When in total, from that distance of 500, is 19 along. So for 19 along, the difference is 500. For 13 and a half along, we say it's 13.5 divided by 19, that it's that fraction of the difference here of 500. And what does that come to? 13.5 divided by 19 times 500 is 355. Uh, plus 1500 gives 1855. Let me check my arithmetic. 13.5 divided by 19 times 500. 355 plus 1500. 1855. So there we are. So it is that bit messier. And do check what's required. It may, if you just want the median class, then there's your answer. It's somewhere between 1500 and 2000. If you are required to put a value on it, well, if you need, wind back and listen to that again slowly. But we do a portion uh, the way along, as though they are all spread evenly. Uh, finally, and nice and easy here, the mode. Remember in the previous lecture when we looked at discrete variables, the mode was the most frequently occurring observation. Well, same here and here. We, we're not going to put a value on it. It would just be what we call the modal class. Now what I mean is, looking back at the table, for each of those classes or ranges or groups, which was the most common, the most popular? Well, the biggest frequency was 19. And so the most popular group or class is, as it turns out again, 1500 to 2000. And here, uh, we wouldn't be expected to put an actual value on it, uh, as we did with the median. But there we are. The modal class, 2000, the median, 1855. The average, the uh, sorry, the arithmetic mean, 1817. Uh, now, before I leave this chapter, or not this chapter, sorry, before I leave averages, and then we'll turn to what we mean by dispersion, as to why we've got three averages, in real life it very much depends what we want it for, what we're doing. And some people argue depending on what they're trying to achieve. Uh, the most 
The logical average is the arithmetic mean. I think I said enough, 1817. And certainly in further work later, in the rest of this chapter and the next one, it's the arithmetic mean that's important. Uh, one problem is, as I said, that it won't necessarily coincide with an actual observation. You know, with errors, there were no weeks where the error was, I think it was 1.54. Uh, even uh, with these ranges, there might be no weeks where we paid an actual 1817. Whereas at least the median class and the modal class, you know, are actual figures. And the other thing, though, it depends how people are using them. You see, suppose instead of being the amount paid each week, suppose the figures in that table are the amounts paid to each employee. You know, some employee or one employee only got paid somewhere between zero and 500. Four employees got paid between 500 and 1,000. 19 employees got paid 1,500, 2,000, and so on. Well, if you were arguing about your wages, you might say, well, I've discovered the average wage is 1817. I'm only being paid 500. I want to be paid more. Fine. But you may be more concerned about the median and say, well, the median is 1855, forget we've assumed it's spread evenly. But if you paid 1855, there are as many people paid more than you as there are paid less than you. You're right in the middle. Now what happens, suppose these were wages to employees and one was paid, you know, the senior manager was paid 20,000. Well, sure, that would push the average, oh, let's say 200,000. If there was one person paid 200,000, that would make the arithmetic mean quite a lot higher. And yes, I'd argue, well, there's no way I'm going to pay you the average just because the senior is paid 200,000. Look at the median. That's the middle. As many people paid above as below, I'd argue the median was more relevant. Or possibly the mode. Oh, all right, there may be one person paid 200,000, but the majority are paid between 1,500 and 2,000. So it's different ways people argue about, you know, what they want the average to mean. And that's why I mean and median and mode appear. But again, the important one is the arithmetic mean, uh, because that's the one we'll use in further work. Anyway, I'll leave averages there. Uh, for the rest of this chapter, in the next lecture, we'll look at measures of dispersion.